Bob Horn loves bikes. The faster, the better. It's the closest thing you can feel to flying. You're feeling speed, the you know, excitement, such danger. 25 years ago, he was bitten hard by the bike bug. I bought a nice 1967 BSA C12, a little uh, 250, uh, gorgeous motorcycle, all black chrome and polished aluminum. It's a very beautiful bike. That motorcycle and I went on many long walks together because it wasn't very reliable. So Bob thought, why not build one himself? And just the idea of building your own bike from scratch and designing it, that seemed like the ultimate thing to do. First, he bought a Harley and customized it. Next, he built one from scratch. This electric bike hanging in his living room is a personal favorite. But Bob's latest masterpiece, the Rohorn Experimental 500, is way more than a hobby. I got a good uh, trace of the engine, the outline, got a good idea of the seat angles that I wanted, and uh, spent, well, after that, a whole lot of time grinding, fitting, and welding a lot of steel and other parts. That's basically how you build a race bike from scratch. For three and a half years, Bob worked on the Rohorn in his shed, making sure every detail was picture perfect. Bob was so inspired, he signed up to race it himself. But the bike had other plans. Well, I'd finished about 10 laps at the race school, and we pulled in. Instructor made a bunch of uh, good suggestions on how I could go through uh, one of the faster turns of the track. So we head out, and I'm blazing through turn four. We went flying through the turn a lot faster than I was used to. So I threw the bike hard over on uh, to the left, trying to make the corner, and instead uh, ended up landing the bike on its side. That's how they noticed that there's steam coming off the engine. Turns out it's on uh, cool and it's gas. At that point, I stopped checking for broken bones or anything like that. I just got out there because I didn't want to catch fire. What should have been Bob's first racing year was spent in his shed rebuilding the bike. The new and improved Rohorn is a beauty, and it's ready to race again. There like that. Because it's sealed, I was able to put the battery sideways. Normally it's standing up, but with it sideways, I was able to mount it a lot lower than normal and keep the center of gravity lower, and that's it for the battery. It takes about two hours to prep the bike. I need to check over all the welds, all the uh, brackets and bearings and metal parts just to make sure that nothing's there cracked or bent or strained. The Rohorn is one of a kind. Something a lot of people ask me about is why the exhaust is routed where it is and the length. It's designed using a software for race car exhausts. Something else that's a little different is the rear suspension. Th this rear system is actually a temporary. It will have a disc brake instead of the drum brake that's on it now. The maneuverability is uh, enhanced by the uh, low center of gravity. It's uh, a lot lower to the ground. There's uh, very few bikes out there with the remote steering. Almost all of them have the handlebars. I'm able to use a much faster string of geometry than a normal bike. Uh, I don't have to worry about uh, weaves and wobbles on this uh, at all. And yeah, the nose section. You can see the foam that I mounted the, uh, the new fuel cell in. This should uh, cushion it in case I ever crash again. It's kind of a close fit in my headrest. And I think this bike looks better with its clothes on. With the bike dressed for success, it's race day and Bob is ready to roll. There's always that little bit of fear, a little bit of uh, tension. After all the years of working on it and planning and dreaming and imagining it and being at the track, well, I'm there now. Here, the bikes are the stars of the show. It's uh, sort of a catch-all class. There are people with uh, dirt bikes with uh, race tires on them. There's some guys with the Grand Prix bikes with 650 single engines in them that are real fast. Is that off a dirt bike? Yeah, yeah it, it's a super trap. I just, instead of running the disc, I just perforated the end cap. <laughs> Time to fire up the bike and head out to the starting line. Time freezes. It's just, from that moment on, everything matters. I don't even know if my heart's beating or not. It's just my mind and the bike that's all I'm aware of. And the competition. <laughs> to me, winning is not finishing last. Winning is not crashing, and winning is not having the bike break down. <sighs> well, that was fun. He's smiling now, but a burning exhaust pipe nearly took Bob out of the race. Well, it got hotter and hotter, and I thought I was going to have to uh, pit and uh, not finish the race. So I was able to uh, reach down and uh, twist the, uh, the baffle, which was starting to direct the, uh, the exhaust out of my leg, and uh, twist it and uh, burn a hole in my glove, burn my finger a little bit, but that's no big deal. Good news is I finished the race. And now the results are in. Here it is. Here's the results. 17th out of 18. No, I didn't finish last. <laughs> Better luck next time. By the end of next year, it's going to be in the top ten. I have no doubt about that at all.